the death of Shireen Abu Akleh, the Al Jazeera Palestinian American journalist who was shot in the face while wearing a press vest and helmet, most likely by a IDF sniper. Her colleague, also wearing a press vest, also shot, but uh, has not died. Yes, it is a tragedy when anybody dies during this brutal occupation by Israel in uh, West Bank and Gaza and occupied Palestine. But why? I mean, the, the, the reason you have Pelosi and Democrats coming out and disavowing this is because the killing of journalists is supposed to be beyond the pale. And that's why Jamal Khashoggi, that was such a massive uh, story, particularly the gruesome nature of it, and the fact that the Bush administration, I mean, the, the Trump administration did not hold anybody accountable for that. But frankly, even though this isn't like directly at the orders of Bennett or of likely of, of Israeli leadership, I mean, I, it doesn't seem that way. This is still the consequence of a... Uh, a brutal state occupation, a military occupation that we fund. And we have, there's zero conditions associated with that. Here is some footage of the funeral of Shireen Abu Akleh um, and just hundreds of Palestinians in the streets as her, her body is being carried uh, by, by other journalists. So, I mean, that's just a, an example of the the people, the hundreds of thousands of people who are going to see this kind of violence and are going to be galvanized by it. And again, the brutality that is obscured here by the United States, by people who want to defend Israel's occupation, is that this is a completely imbalanced situation israel has all of the power the palestinians have none of it have none of it so when there is retaliatory violence by palestinians in israel that is a result a backlash from a brutal occupation and has to be perceived as such because that is the reality and yet it's always oh there's violence on both sides who knows 50 50 etc so because of the blatant nature of the killing of Shireen uh, Abu Akla. Ned Price of the State Department feels he has to respond to it. The Biden administration does it through him. Pelosi felt she had to respond to it. Uh, Mark Pocan, others gave kind of uh, standard, oh, we condemn this. We need to do a thorough investigation into it. Those were their responses versus like Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib were very aggressive in saying, no, this is this is the result of the occupation. Um, but this is, this is Ned Price at this press conference gives a standard. Uh, we're deeply disturbed by this. Um, but he's now questioned here by a reporter who says, well, who's going to do the investigation? Because pro-Palestinian activists are looking for an independent investigation. But right now, the only thing set up is that Israel's going to do the investigation into this. And that's yeah. just a kangaroo. Yeah, and court. their lead right now is that they think some uh, Palestinians did it. Yeah. Like, it, Israel is absolutely, like, as far as, like, states that are hostile to a truth and justice, I mean, we have our own problems here in America, and everyone's very familiar with Russia now. Uh, this is the, the sort of mendacity where there's, yeah, we think it might have been Palestinians. It's just lying about murder. And that's what that country does as a habit. And here's Ned Price being asked a question about that. Anger with you today. Yeah. I'm uh, very glad to see it. Yes. Yeah, boss, this is Anna. Ned. Anna. Good to uh, meet you. We'll talk later today. Yes. Um, on this uh, situation, when you call for an immediate and thorough investigation, who exactly do you want to do that? Uh, we, it is important to us that those who are responsible for her death 
uh, be held responsible, that full accountability uh, be ensured in this case. Okay, but my question is not that. My question is who do you think conduct a credible investigation into her death that would be accepted by all parties, including the United States? Well, in this case, I'm not going to prejudge where any investigation may go. We've seen, of course, that the Israeli Defense Forces this is just a, a, a guy lying like and acting like he doesn't understand the question. That's not what we asked where it will go. It's who is conducting it. Yeah. Ned. I'm not going to prejudge where any investigation may go. We've seen, of course, that the Israeli Defense Forces uh, have already announced that there is an investigation uh, underway. We welcome that announcement. Uh, it is important <laughs> to us. It is important to the world uh, that that investigation be thorough, uh, that it be comprehensive, that it be transparent. And importantly, uh, that investigations end with full accountability and those responsible uh, for her death um, being held responsible for their actions. Okay, but I mean, do you want the Palestinians to be involved in the investigation? Uh, the IDF has announced an investigation. Uh, All right, that's the mm -hmm. IDF. The IDF. I Not the IDF. The ones who uh, shot her. Yeah. For Israel. That's correct. So, um, what about the Palestinians? Because there are there are calls in Israel for the Palestinians to take part in this. What what is and I'm sure the Palestinians will do their own uh, review as well. We've heard uh, <laughs> statements from both Israelis and Palestinians over the course uh, of the day. Pause what is important? Sec. What is the uh, what, when the Palestinians do their own review? What uh, how, does the United States hold any weight of that, or are they yeah. just privileging the IDF investigation? You mean the people that actually shot? Uh the yeah. journalists. Are those Palestinians able to subpoena uh, members of the Israeli military? Hmm. All right. Well, we'll just let's, let's f finish up this interaction. Then I know I've talked a lot. I'll let you guys go. To us is that those responsible for this killing uh, be held accountable for their actions. Okay. So, well, all right. So just one more thing and then I'll defer. Uh, but uh, are you confident that Maybe you're not because the investigation hasn't been done. But does it appear to you, circumstances right now, as you know, them, that she was targeted because she was a journalist? I'm not going to prejudge an investigation. That's precisely why we're calling for an investigation. All right. Well, he's just, just yeah, pablum. But uh, she was wearing a press vest. The other members of her group were wearing press vests. Uh, I think at, at least she was wearing a helmet. Others were wearing helmets as well. And when asked about this, we put up the quote the other day. It was from the Times of Israel. Um, maybe I can find that really quickly and I'll confirm who actually said it. But it was a member of the Israeli government or a spokesperson um, for the IDF or the military there. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. Who oh. essentially said that uh, sh they were armed with cameras. They were armed with cameras. Yeah, I got to hear him. Um, but even if soldiers... Uh, there we go. Uh, Israeli military spokesperson Ron Kochav spoke uh, to the Times of Israel, described uh, Abu Akleh as, quote, filming and working for a media outlet amidst armed Palestinians. Right? They're all terrorists as we occupy their, their home and tear down their homes. By the way, that's what she was filming. Yeah, the context was 40 homes being bulldozed. Bulldozed so that is, uh, Israeli settlers could move in there, which is illegal under international law based on the borders that have been constantly uh, violated for decades and decades. They're armed with cameras, if you'll permit me to say so. <laughs> Well, glad you said it because you told on yourself. She yeah. might have catched his, him in a bad light, uh, so they had to shoot her. Uh, you know. Exactly. Well, in more ways than one. Yeah, and like I, I just think like I'm glad Ilhan uh, in her tweet uh, put out the like home demolitions that were the context, immediate context for this stuff because I think that stuff get that's the important context that really set the table for this violence. And it's like, and I, I want to be careful how I put this because I'm not. I I think like the IDF is completely lying, and I don't think there needs to be an investigation. I think they shot this woman. But let's just say that like there should be like there's some in, uh, uncertainty, right? And there needs to be an investigation. Fundamentally, you have to look at who set the context for this. And it's the exact same thing with like Russia making all these claims about Ukraine staging these 
these uh, atrocities. Motherfucker, you invaded that country. If yeah. they're if they're so um, prone to do all this stuff, which I don't think they are staging these atrocities, I'll just say that again to be clear. But if they are doing that, you you set the stage for that by starting a war that gave them the opportunity to do this. And 100%. that's always that broader context is always the important thing. I don't understand like that's like the tit for tat. Yeah. Like you did this, you did this without the broader context of the brutality and the aggressor. Yeah. The brutality and the aggressor is Israel. Israel. Decades and decades. It's Israel. Every time. And this sort of atrocity, you, you did this atrocity, but the other side did this atrocity. That's This is how like conflicts go, but you need to look at these larger historical situations. Yes. Because, like, it's like it's like in the Spanish Civil War, it's like, oh, all the fascists were like, look at what you did to these monasteries. And, and the Republicans are like, well, you, I mean, you're murdering us in mass. Right. I'm um, using the foreign uh, 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 colon colonial military, right? Like the larger context is, is uh, it clarifies all this sort of like the, this nuance mongering that these sorts of uh, the fact bloodthirsty checkers. Yeah. Yeah, p folks like to do. And and by the way, just that was Matt Lee, a uh, writer for the AP who consistently is a bee in Ned, Ned Price's bonnet and just goes after him, particularly on this issue. So great reporting. And questioning. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. Absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you, you brought up how, uh, you know, his questioning of representing the uh, AP. Uh, honestly, quite rare, actually. Uh, you know, you guys, I think, spoke perfectly on the you know U.S. government's position on this. Um, but to focus on the media aspect now, I mean, if you look at some of those headlines the other day after she was killed, uh, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It was like, oh, a journalist was uh, shot amid clashes between Israeli forces and Palestinians. Clashes? There were no clashes. Uh, second, another one I saw was like. Um, uh, like uh, Al Jazeera journalist dead at 51. No, she was shot and killed. Yeah, the she New York Times said dies at 51, yeah. like it was diabetes or something. <laughs> No. It's it's unbelievable, and it's 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 you know, and these are the same outlets that just uh, you know, in in light of uh, 2020, some of them even had like a, an awakening, going, hey, maybe we shouldn't put protesters on the same uh, level as like armed police forces when we talk about uh, pr protest of and and police response for um, you know things that happen in terms of uh, uh, police brutality. Uh, and now they're just throwing that stuff out the window. Any any lesson they learned apparently doesn't uh, extend to the Palestinian people and the right. journalists over there who were covering legitimately what is going on there and not whatever, uh, you know, the Israeli government would like the American media to cover. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly the point, though, Matt, is to you know, get people to create little silos of information that they keep in discrete little buckets that they don't mm. have to let interact because in the, and specifically in the case of israel it's to get you to and also the democrats to make you feel as though this attack on journalism is some kind some or attack on a journalist is a somehow anomalous event that the you know israeli uh, idf sniper or israel as like a country in its relationship to or as an apartheid state with palestine and the legal occupation of the west bank you know is like somehow a discrete event. It has nothing to do with the, the other brutal acts that uh, Israel inflicts on the Palestinians. It has nothing to do with the fact that they blew up an AP tower a few months ago, I believe, uh, yep. you know, as, as well. It's just another like oopsie that happened that somehow outside of the, you know, outside of the through line of Israel politics as it relates to, you know, uh, Palestinians. But it's also not even outside of the pattern of violence that we see Americans supporting brutal regimes abroad. You know, the idea that Jamal Khashoggi being assassinated by the Saudi government is somehow discreet from, uh, you know, Israel targeting journalists as well and our support of both of those regimes is also just not the case. You know, we we know that America is willing to support regimes abroad, regardless of their buta brutality, as long as they fit within the larger project of American exceptionalism, because then they get afforded the same kinds of, you know, asymmetrical power dynamic in rather impunity. And also, yeah. Impunity that comes with that as people, as you know, power is flattened and people are allowed to, you know, describe the oppressors and the oppressed as though they are on the same, you know, plane of power. We see that. And of course, people also want to pretend as though that when that happens and Americans are conditioned to accept that abroad, that it has no, you know, 
bearing on how we start treating domestic power dynamics, but we see all the time, you know, the same way people are frustrated that when Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden get yelled at online by someone with 300 followers, they get to pretend like they're being bullied and bullying is just as bad as taking away people's rights. It's, you know, it's just how our society has been taught to obscure power and engage in these very, very, like, shallow appeals for nuance that are really just shallow appeals to like the status quo and centrist position that like America can do no wrong. Our vassal states can do no wrong. Uh, the, you know, agents of the status quo can really do no wrong. And if you notice that they're doing wrong, it's either your problem or it's just, you know, an anomalous event that has no bearing on like the pattern of behavior you're noticing is everything is anomaly. Yeah. Or you're bigoted, right? I mean, you're a bigot. so yeah. Um, in this case, particular, it, you know, so it's uh it's very well said um i f- it's uh, last year it was like such a difficult period covering israeli brutality during that time and it's just you know it's difficult to see how nothing's changed and biden has done nothing to uh create conditions for aid to israel and the, and he will do nothing well, I mean, I think that's the kind of ironic thing, especially when people started adopting the word gaslighting to describe like every poorly told lie that Trump said to people that you could easily look up. Is that like this is what gaslighting actually looks like if you want to actually extrapolate it out to like the macro scale. It's you being told that when you're watching a uh, journalist be shot by an IDF sniper who shoots, you know, civilians all the time and they're proud of it, too. They'll tell you about it if you like watch their uh, if you watch their Twitter feed that like, you know, that you're just misunderstanding what's happening. You know, this is somehow outside of, you know, this you cannot trust your senses.